Well, hello, xenographers everywhere, and welcome to another episode. Many vintage lenses have a unique personality and a unique and characterful aesthetic to the images they make. And that applies to their background blur too. They're not so clean and clinical as modern lenses, and what are technically imperfections become strengths, giving a distinctive and often beautiful image. Today we're going to look at five lenses with distinctive, characterful and beautiful background blur. They're all readily available, most of them are very affordable indeed, and they'll give your images some beautiful background blur with a bit of quirky magic. We'll begin with the Jupiter 8, one of the most mass-produced lenses ever. It's a rangefinder lens and it usually comes with a Leica thread mount, although there is a Kiev slash contacts version too. The bokeh from this lens is beautiful. It's very soft, very buttery and very smooth, typical of a sonar lens. The minimum focus distance of three feet or one meter means you won't get the kind of mega blur that closer focusing lenses will give, but its maximum aperture of f2 means it will still give you plenty of the blurry stuff if you stay fairly close to your subject. And that blur is of a very nice character indeed. Blur in the far distance is soft, it's lovely, it creates a wash of shapes and forms that merge into each other, giving a beautifully tranquil feel to an image, separating the subject from the background with a bit of 3D pop. There's not so much blur that objects in the background lose all shape and form. Instead, there's an almost surreal, dreamy, magical rendering of the familiar. Dreamy, creamy and lovely. Near background blur is lovely too, and for the most part very soft, although there is a point where things turn a little bit busy, a little bit nervous. It doesn't happen often though so it's easy to avoid. The blur from this lens is almost always uniformly soft and lovely. It renders point light sources very nicely indeed, creating circular bubbles in the center of the frame, becoming slightly elliptical towards the edges. It makes a great portrait lens because portraits bring it near to its minimum focus distance where background blur is at maximum especially if the background is fairly distant. It's a lovely little lens, and at around £30 for a good one, you really can't go wrong. A great little lens at a bargain price, with plenty of sonar blur. The Zuiko 50mm f1.8 is a lens that can make some delicious blur. Its minimum focus distance of 45 centimeters means it can deliver the blurry stuff in abundance. You certainly won't go short of it with this one. Blur from this lens is absolutely beautiful. It's dreamy, it's creamy, it's lovely. Distant blur makes everything turn into liquid. Shapes and forms melt and merge into each other like shapes in a lava lamp and you end up with a wash of shape and form that feels soft, gentle and warm, framing the subject beautifully and making composition that bit easier by smoothing out any distractions, leaving you free to concentrate on the subject. Closer background blur is lovely too, very soft and very nice for the most part, although there is an unsweet spot where it becomes a little bit harsh and jittery. Point light sources are circular in the central area, becoming very slightly elliptical towards the edges. There's no discernible swirl with this one though, just a beautiful wash of bubbles in the background that add a little sparkle and a touch of magic to any image lucky enough to possess them. If you're close enough to your subject, within four or five feet or so, this lens will separate the subject from the background and give you some really nice 3D pop. It's a great little lens, and it's cheap. You can find a good one for around 30 to 40 pounds, 
and at that price you just can't go wrong. Next up is a 135mm lens, the Carl Zeiss Jenna f3.5. And when it comes to the blurry stuff, there are few lenses nicer than this one. I've not had this lens for long, and despite reading some good reviews on it, I wasn't quite prepared for just how nice it was going to be. At 135mm, it's a longish lens, and so of course there's plenty of the blurry stuff available. But what surprised me is the quality of the blur. It's absolutely delicious. Deep background blur is nothing short of beautiful. It has a softness you can almost feel. Objects in the deep background lose all sense of form and merge into each other to create a smooth canvas of light and colour, framing the subject and making it really stand out. Near a background blur is, again, very soft indeed, and because this is a very sharp lens, images have loads of 3D pop. And even at longer subject to camera distances, because it's a longish lens, there's still plenty of separation from the background. Bubbles from point light sources are big and beautiful when shooting close. They're circular in the central area, becoming slightly elliptical further out. While bubbles in the deep background are smaller, they're always plentiful and abundant, with central circles and ellipses further out, although there's no point where they produce any sort of swirl effect. Blur on the whole has the signature look of Carl Zeiss Jenna lenses. Very smooth, very soft, very dreamy, with no unsweet spot where things turn harsh, at least not that I've been able to find. A beautiful lens with some beautiful blur, and at 60 to 80 pounds for a good one, a real bargain too. Next up is a new lens, although because it's all manual, it's firmly in the vintage tradition. It's the Niwa 35mm f1.2, and if it's the blurry stuff you're after, this one will not disappoint. It focuses down to 30 centimeters, and when you're shooting close, the blur this little lens produces is nothing short of epic. At this range, the blur is very soft and creamy. It gives a wash of color, and form and shape pretty much disappear. Blur like this makes a great framing device because it focuses attention on the subject. Focusing needs to be spot on though because depth of field is razor thin. It is pretty soft wide open, but I think that's part of its dreamy creamy look and it does lend something of the character of an older lens, which I think is kind of nice. Point light sources form circular bubbles and they stay circular right out to the edge. Bubbles lend a bit of magic to images, get enough of them in the background and they give images plenty of sparkle. Get it right and images become really special. There is a point where the blur turns a little bit harsh and nervous. Sometimes bubbles seem to echo and repeat and stack up on top of each other. It's not difficult to shoot around this point though, and most of the time the lens is well behaved. But I don't think it's quite as good in this area as the other lenses on test. A very nice little lens though, good value at around £70, and if you're shooting close to your subject, definitely a bokeh monster. Last in today's lineup is the Olympus Suico 100mm f2.8. And this one will give you as much of the blurry stuff as you want. Blur from this lens feels just lovely. Smooth, soft, creamy and dreamy, with great colour rendition too. Deep background blur is very soft indeed, and the closer you get to your subject, the smoother it becomes. Shapes, forms and colours merge into each other, giving a lovely tranquil feel to an image helping to concentrate attention on the subject. And because it's a longish lens, there's still plenty of blur at longer subject to camera distances. 
point light sources are circular in the centre, becoming elliptical towards the edges, and under the right conditions it creates a little bit of swirl, although swirl isn't as pronounced as other well-known swirlers like the Helios 44. Blur from closer backgrounds is soft too, it stays lovely and soft throughout, and there doesn't seem to be an unsweet spot where things turn harsh or nervous. Because it's a fairly long lens, it's able to separate the subject from the background even at longer subject to camera distances, so it'll give you plenty of 3D pop. This is a lens I haven't used very much until recently, but the more I use it, the more I like it. It's not particularly fast at f2.8, but its 100mm focal length means it's great at creating the blurry stuff. Its minimum focus distance of 1 meter isn't particularly close, but again, because of that 100mm focal length, it never feels like you can't get close enough. A great little lens with some very nice blur indeed. And there we are, five great little lenses that will give you some beautiful blur, each with a signature look and a little bit of magic too. So until next time, that's it from me. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you go, and I will see you next time for some more Xenography. As ever, thanks for watching.